Hello once again my fellow Fixit employees and welcome back to another episode of How to Satisfactory. Well, we're going to get right into things today. We've got a lot to go over and I'm going to try to do it in as quick amount of time as I possibly can because uh, we have a problem we got to solve. By now you may have noticed some of your light is getting backed up. Uh, you may have some storage boxes down here that just uh, aren't accepting anything else. They are completely full. Well, we're going to solve that issue today. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. In the last episode, we learned all about the MAM, what it's for, how it's used, etc. And I had mentioned getting down here in the Caterium section, this tree here, to get to the Smart Splitter. So, if you guys got that and you've already unlocked it, then you can kind of skip this next section. But if not, well, we're going to learn how to, uh, how to get down to that. Basically, we're going to need a few things. we got to unlock the AI limiters first which is going to need more quick wire, more Caterium, etc, etc. So, let's start off by putting in a Caterium constructor. Alright, so we still have a little bit to go before we can actually get a conveyor belt of Caterium running down through here, but it's good to set up the foundation for that now. So what we're going to do is actually do the exact same thing we did over here for our regular wire and, you know, pretty much our copper line. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab these foundations over here we're going to come over here to the other side of where our miners are. We're going to go right here, and we're going to click on once there. There we go. And we're going to hit R until we get to vertical mode. And we're going to build three of these upwards like that. Very good. All right. And then we are going to do the exact same thing down here on this side, exactly where that one is. So look for that one. Bring it across right there. And then build that one. Eh, that one's going to go about four up because you have the one at the bottom down here. So that one and then one, two, three. All right. Now, let's go ahead and we're going to grab one meter foundations now. So you can hit E, if you remember right, to go to the one meter foundation. And we're going to put it right on the edge of that. And we're also going to go into zoop mode by hitting R twice. There we go. And we're going to build that across there. And right there in the middle as well. Perfect. All right, and then let's come down here, and we're going to build our foundations up down through here as well. I might as well just build them all the way down to the end down there. And then we're going to grab some ramps, and we're going to bring these ramps down right here against. Find where you built that up at, and then just bring that down. There we go. All right, and then we have a ramp going up. All right, now once you're up on top of here, and you have your first bit of this little platform built, what we're going to do is we're going to extend this out to about this one we did the other one over there 10 right but this one's only going to go about nine because we have that rock wall right there so let's go out nine you can pretty much go as far as you want it's just going to go up to the edge of that rock though which is going to be about nine away like this one right here i'm pretty sure won't even let you go out to 10 all right so we'll just keep extending this out all right, and once you have this built, uh, we don't need to do anything fancy just yet because, like I said, we can't get a conveyor belt over here or anything, but we do need to get a smelter going, so I would suggest just going ahead and finding your middle point, which is probably going to be right around here somewhere. Uh, let's put it right here on this one. This doesn't have to be exact here. Uh, we just want to be able to have a smelter that we can throw our ingots into, and then we can come over here and then just kind of keep building along here. All right, so here we're going to come out to, oh, right about here. This is fine, right there, which is just one square away. And then we're going to bring this one over here to this side and put it right there as well. Once you have your two constructors on those two platforms right there, come right here in the middle, right in front of our smelter. And we're going to place a splitter down right there so that the input is going this way. And then we'll go ahead and put our two conveyor belts running into each of these. There we go. And the conveyor belt from our smelter in that. Now, if we want to, and I'm actually going to go ahead and do this. Let's go into our build menu. Let's go into organization. We'll just grab a storage container. And I'm actually going to put a storage container kind of right here. Right on that. And then run a conveyor belt from that storage container into our smelter. Alright, so next thing is we're just kind of to put power to this. You guys should have this down pat by now. 
So the way I did my power was I started down here at the bottom where this one comes in at. There should be already a power pole there. I just ran it straight up to this foundation here, right on the edge. So we have a wire that comes straight up through there. And then I just ran it right along the edge down here to where the machines are, to this side here. Ran a couple right there in the middle, and then connected the machines to the two in the middle. I also ran another wire down this way, and one to that machine. Feel free to do this however you wish though. Whatever you think looks best, it's, uh, it's your game from here on out. I'm just kind of showing you the ropes. And that's one of the beauties of Satisfactory, is that you can play the game however you want. You don't have to build anything exactly the way that I build it. Feel free to experiment, learn on your own, uh, test things, you know, because more than likely you're going to be like me. This isn't going to be your only playthrough. You're going to play some and then you're going to be like, you know what, I can do this better. And then you're going to try something else and you're going to experiment more. And that's, again, the beauty of Satisfactory. There's always something else that you can perfect on the things that you create. And that's why I love the game so much. All right, so at this point, we are going to tell our smelter to make Kateria ingots. We are going to tell our machines here, our constructors, to make quick wire. There we go. All right, and it's going to take uh, 12 Kateria ingots to make five quick wire, or 60 per minute. So 12 per minute of the Kateria ingots. 60 quick wire per minute. That's a lot of quick wire. That sure is. All right. No worries though. Uh, for the time being, let's just go ahead and plop a couple, uh, or at least one storage container down here. Let's put it right here. Yeah, yeah, right in the middle actually. That's that's probably perfectly fine. Let's get it right here. Yeah. Right there. All right. And then we will just put a a merger actually right here on this side so let's do that and then click that over to a merger all right so we'll just put that right in front of our storage container like that and then we should be able to just connect these conveyor belts right up to that uh nope not exactly i mean you could do that sure but let's place them one out and then into that and then same thing here bring it out one into that connect that into that all right, make sure this one's also set to quick wire. All right, so everything is set. All we gotta do now at this point is plop in any Caterium that you actually have into here. If you don't have any Caterium, well, let's go grab some. Now before we head over and get the Caterium though, let me teach you one more real quick trick right here and kind of about one of the things that's in the game. So we're going to need an equipment workshop and unfortunately we kind of deleted our, our old one. So let's go ahead and throw another one down. So we'll just build another foundation right here next to this. We're going to our build menu, go to uh, production. Yeah, it's under production. Go down to the equipment workshop and we're going to pop a new equipment workshop right here. Just temporarily, this one is actually going to be moved here shortly. But yeah, let's throw it here for now. All right, and we're going to come in here and you should see something called beacons. So if you want, just create one or two of these, or five or 10, however many you want to create. Don't waste too many materials on them though. We're only going to need like one right now just to teach you this. But uh, let's make a couple of these here. All right, so I made five. There we go. And then we can just go delete the equipment workshop. And now do you remember where our Criterium node is from the last episode. Hopefully you've been going back and forth and you kind of got it down pat right now, but it is to the Southwest from our main hub, so right towards this direction. I would say it's over here where the trees are, but we kind of cut the trees down in, in that episode. So, but anyway, just make your way back over there and you should find where it is that you made your ramp down to here. All right, now we're gonna go down here. Let's go into our inventory. Remember that is the tab button. I'm sure you guys know this by now, but you know, it, I'm just teaching. All right, and we're gonna put a beacon into our hand here. Now you should have one. He's kind of looking at it. He's like, oh, this is new. What's this? It's not a lightsaber. Nope, it is a beacon. All right, so we're going to just plop one of these down somewhere. Just uh, click your mouse button to place one and then hit E to configure this. Now you can name it here and I highly suggest doing so. You can name it whatever you want. I'm actually gonna just call it Caterium. And then we have it. Now you need to make sure to hit the enter key on your keyboard to make sure that it actually stays the name. If you just hit something else, then it, 
or if you just exit out, it, it's not going to save the name. It's just going to say Beacon. All right, also, you're going to notice a, a big yellow button right over here, which is just screaming, press me. And a lot of people may think, uh, even I do this sometimes, that hitting the big yellow button is how you actually enter the name and everything. But no, that's to pick it up. So if you do hit that, you pick your beacon back up. You don't want to do that. Nope. You want to pop one down, hit E to configure, name it, and then once it's named, hit enter. All right. And then you can hit your escape key to just exit out of it. Now, you will notice on your compass at the top of the screen, you will see it says... Caterium. All right, so no matter where you're at in the world, that beacon is always going to be there. Beacons are extremely handy for like marking locations and stuff like that, especially if you come across a crash site and you can't do anything with it and you want to come back to it later, you can use beacons for that. Now I know crash site, what is he talking about? Uh, we'll get to that in the next episode. All right, anyway, now that we're over here, let's just go ahead and we're going to grab some Caterium. All right, so we have marked the location using a beacon, so we never forget where our Caterium is. And we have picked up as much Caterium as we can handle right now, or at least all that's in those. Now we're going to head back to the hub, and remember, you can always find your hub, because it's still on the compass as well, with the thing that says the hub. All right, so now that you've got your Caterium, we're back at the hub. Let's bring it up here to where our Caterium quick wire constructors are going to be. And let's bring it back here, and we're going to plop all of this awesome Caterium ore right into this organization box. Now, the quick way to do this is just hold down your control key and just click one and it'll put all that you have into the box. Now, you should see it start flowing in there. All right, so now we have Caterium ingots being made automatically and we have quick wire also being made and the quick wire is going into our box here. Awesome, so we can now kind of work on this and we don't have to keep like manually crafting it We can just have it to be done automatically over here Awesome now this is going to be using a little bit more power So at any point that you want Feel free to add another biomass generator down here Of course realize that that is going to be using even more biomass so There there is that but for now. I think we're good right now at the moment. Let's see here uh we have a capacity for 190, maximum consumption is 183. If we add anything else, constructor-wise, or anything else that uses power, we're probably going to blow a fuse. But right now, we're good. We don't have to worry about it right this second. All right, so while we are waiting for our quick wire to be made and our machines over there, we're going to take a little bit of an adventure. So make sure that you have your Xeno Zapper equipped. And make sure you are at full health because you never know what we're going to find this way. And we're going to come over here to where the copper is being made. And you should see kind of a, this is kind of a road. Yeah, it, it's a road. Whatever you want to call it, you know, dirt path, anything. We're going to call it a road. And we're going to follow this down into this valley down here. Okay, so previously I have discussed the bacon plant. You've also probably seen it in the MAM research as well because it is needed for a couple of things to research. Well, I'm going to show you where to find some at, and it is almost always going to be here. But you're also going to possibly, if you've not explored down this way yet, you're going to come across, obviously, some monsters. So let's take care of this guy real quick here. Man, I hate these guys. All right, well, let's grab that. And you should come across a slug up here if you haven't found it yet. So we'll grab that slug. All right, and kind of keep going on down this way. Be sure to pick up anything else that you might find. Like, I myself just found some quartz here. Uh, which reminds me, in my last video, I told you guys that the Caterium node and the quartz and stuff was up in there. I have recently discovered that that is not always so. Every game you start, these little, like, consumable nodes, like these, just the kind of rock outcrops, uh, are different in every game. They're not always the same. The nodes are always the same. The bacon that we're going to go find is always the same. Pretty much most everything is the same in the game except for these. These will change as well as hard drive recipes as well. And again, we'll get to that in probably the next episode. All right, anyway, if you come across any of these, just grab it if you if you need more of it. All right, so I just grabbed that quartz. But again, that could be caterium, that could be limestone, iron. It could be anything for you. And just kind of keep traveling down into this valley down in here. 
All right, so keep coming down through here, and you should come across uh, these right here. This is uh, probably a new kind of plant for you. Some sort of weird hive-looking thing. Don't worry, it's not dangerous. At least I don't think so. Anywhere in this area. You should also see these. These. This is water, obviously. It's a geyser here that we have. So we will probably maybe get around to this a little bit later. Uh, but that's this is far, far, far in the future before we talk about what these are. For the meantime, though, at least you know that this is here. And also, we have a beautiful waterfall in the distance. And some nice purple trees up there. But yeah, come down here where you see these kind of, this geyser and these hive-like rock tree branches things. And if we head over here in this little corner, now you should find bacon agaric. Now, unlike the berries and the nuts, these things do not regrow. Once you pick them, that's it. That's all there is of them. There are no more. There's like one more right there. And actually, we are going to try to get to that. So I'm just going to plop down a foundation so I can kind of jump up to here, on to here. There we go. All right. So you should get a few of these. Now, these are magically delicious mushrooms. Uh, they re refill your health quite a bit. But remember, they don't regrow. So let's not use them right now at the moment. Instead, we are going to take them back with us. And also, let's go ahead and grab pretty much as any of these nuts and stuff that you see down here too. All right, so now let's head back to our hub, which is back up the valley here. All right, once we get back to the hub, let's head up here to our small container that we have here. And by this point, we should have uh, at least 500 quick wire. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less, just depends on how much you have. That's, that's a lot of quick wire, and I think that should come in handy. All right, so now let's head back over to our MAM research. And here at our MAM research station, let's go into Caterium. And we're going to unlock the AI limiters. That's one of the first things we're going to do. Uh, looks like we're going to need... I'm going to need some copper sheets. You may not, but not a problem. We have copper sheets, right? We, we should. We should have some right over here. All right, so now that you have your resources that you're going to need, go ahead, click on AI limiter, and start research. Now, this is only going to take us a couple seconds for this one. And there we go. All right. Now we've unlocked a couple more things in the tree. Now we've also unlocked high speed connectors and the smart splitter we can now do. Now we're not concerned about the high speed connectors right now at the moment. We are concerned about the smart splitters. So we are going to need 10 of those new things we just learned. The AI limiters and we're going to need about 50 reinforced plates. Well, we should have the reinforced plates being made, but we'll have to manually make those AI limiters. So let me grab some of these plates here real quick. And here at our crafting bench, we'll just come over here and we'll start making some AI limiters. Now we're going to need 10 of these, and we have enough stuff to make 15. All right, so let's go ahead and make these 15. All right, so let's take our 50 reinforced plates and our 10 AI limiters back over here to the MAM. Go to back to Caterium. We're going to do Smart Splitter and click Research. Now, this is going to take about five minutes, so um, good time to kind of go over here to your inventory and just kind of clean some stuff out. So these flower petals, you don't need the flower petals. Hold on to them because we might need them later. Uh, they are used for something, uh, just nothing immediately. So we can kind of keep some of those in there. And if you have anything else you want to drop right now, is a good time to do it. In fact, let's go ahead and put our power slugs in there too because we're going to mess with those maybe in the next episode. And let's see, this quartz, that's fine. We'll put that in there and we'll hit sort. And I think, I think we're good. All the rest of this stuff is fine. So we'll keep everything else on us. But if you have anything else you want to drop, just do so here into our thing. And let's head back over to grab some more Caterium. Alright, so I just grabbed all the Caterium from our miners that we have here. But since we are waiting a little bit for the MAM to uh, do its thing, I'm just going to hold off here and wait for these guys to gather some more. Alright, so while I was waiting for our MAM to complete, I was able to go through two more cycles of the miners. And I got a total of 900 Caterium, which is going to make a lot of quick wire. So let's go ahead and plop that all in there and head back over to our research. All right, and back over here at our MAM research. Now we have now completed smart splitters. Fantastic smart New splitters are unlocked. so nice. And I'm going to show you how to use those. All right, so let's plop one down here right now. 
Alright, so you should already have a regular splitter or merger in your hotbar. Go ahead and bring that up, and then we're going to hit E, and then you should change over to a smart splitter. Now it's going to tell you you're going to need two reinforced plates, two rotors, and one of the AI limiters. So let's make a couple more AI limiters. Also, if you need to, you can make some rotors too, since we're not actually making those anywhere just yet. All right, now come back over here and let's actually plop down a smart splitter and let's take a look at it. So we'll bring that one up and we'll hit E until it says smart splitter. And we will place that down with our input being here and outputs being the other way. So this works pretty much the same way a regular splitter does, except we can have more options. This one you can configure the same way you can like a constructor or something. So let's take a look at this real quick. If we hit E on it, we get a menu and it says outputs now outputs are from this is the input right here so you have a line coming in right so this is stuff coming in and we have three outputs we have we get on top of this here we have the left we have the right and we have center all right so configure here to the left the center and to the right so if uh let's say we have multiple things coming in let's say you have a line of plates rods and copper wire all on the same line we want to divide that up we let's say we want our plates to go to the left so we can just come over here and we can actually search here we just start typing and you will see that we get a list here so we can choose iron plates and then our center let's say we want copper wire going that way or yeah we'll, we'll do sheets copper sheets and then to the right we want iron rods all right now I don't actually have something where I can kind of show you just yet how this will work but all the input so you got all three of those coming in on one line right what it will do is it will send send each of those individually out to the other options so you'll have your copper sheets work move straight and then the other one will go that way. And then your iron plates will go that way to whatever machine you need it to go. It's quite handy. And I'm going to show you how to use this so we can unlock some cool stuff. All right, so now let's come over here to our hub and let's go to our terminal. So what we want to unlock now is the resource sync program. So let's go ahead and select that milestone and let's put in anything that we need to unlock it. Let's go ahead and grab that. Alright, so once you have everything you need to unlock the Resource Sync Bonus Program, go ahead and click the button and let's get that unlocked. Alright, so you're probably wondering what in the world did we just do? Alright, let's go into our build menu real quick and go under Special. Now, you should have two new things in here, the Awesome Sync and the Awesome Shop. So what the sync does is it breaks down material and turns it into coupons. You can then use those coupons to buy things in the shop. So kind of how, like how the man research over here, how we can like find materials and then put come over here, research it, and we learn new recipes and stuff. Well, we can find new construction stuff, new things like new kinds of walls, new kinds of floors, all sorts of things that are going to make it really handy for us to make something cool. That's going to be found in the awesome shop, but you have to buy them using tickets and you get the tickets by sinking materials into it. Now, typically, you want to sink materials that you don't need, extra stuff, things like that. And that's what we're going to do today is we're going to set up a storage system and we're going to set up the sink. And everything that we've done at this point has been just towards this part right here. All right, so now comes the construction part of this video. I won't do a whole lot of detail like I normally do in the other videos because at this point, you guys have learned how to build. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out these ramps that we have already here because we're going to do a little bit of expansion right here. And we're going to build these out just by one right here, just like that. All right, and then we're going to take and we're going to put a ramp up on top of this. So let's go to foundations and ramp. And we're going to put that one right here facing that way. And we're going to do two up like so. All right, and then we grab a foundation. We're going to come up here on top. We're going to put that foundation this way and just uh, just run it across just a little bit. doesn't have to be all the way. And then go over to the other side, do the exact same thing. Expand it out by one and do a ramp up by two. Like so. 
There we go. And then our ramp. Grab that one over there. Up and up. And let's make sure that these connect right here. There we go. Alright, now once we have this platform like this, what we're going to do is we're going to push this back. We're going to make it by two, like so. And then just kind of push it over till they match. There we go. And bringing that one over. And we should have a three by seven platform up here. Alright, so now with our platform built, what we're going to do is go into our construction menu and we're going to go to organization and storage containers. Grab these small containers. We're going to make it so that it's pointing towards us with the blue arrows. And we're going to find, we're going to go one foundation over from the side here, right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to push this forward two. I think it's two. Let me see here. If we place one down, and make sure it's also hanging over on the side a little bit here too, so it's not exactly on that foundation. So you don't want it to look like that on the side. You want it to look like it's overhanging the other foundation here, just a little bit. So let's bring that up. Uh, let's try one first. And here's the reason why. It's because we're really close to this gas right here. So if, we, if we're standing here, right in front of this container, are we getting hit? No, we are not. All right, so there's one out. So that's where you want it. Now we're going to build four of these containers side to side. So one, two, this will be number two. This will be number three. And come over here, four. All right, grab another one of these containers. Come over here to the other side. And we're going to start from this side and do the same thing. So kind of hang it over, go one foundation over, have it hanging over just a little bit, bring it up so that it is matching. I guess it was two. No, I thought I had it as one, but all right. So two. There. There. And there. Now I've tested this a lot, and this is the best way that we're going to get the most storage containers in here and also the space that we need. So there is going to be a little bit of a gap right here in the middle, and that's going to be fine. We're not so worried about this little gap as long as we have eight containers up here. And again, if you're standing right in front of this container, like, let's say you go up here to get something out of this container. You're not getting hit by the gas. You're perfectly fine, and that's good. That's what we want. All right. Now, come down here on this side here. Grab one of these ramps. What we're going to do is we're going to build upwards right here. Right there by one ramp, and we're going to grab a foundation. We're going to put it up here on this one, and then just zoop it over. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about how far you got to go with it because this is this is going to be deleted later. Same way we're about to delete the back of this right here. We don't need these on the back. We only needed those so we could place our containers right here and get everything right. All right, so now eight containers, one construction platform so we can work behind the containers and everything should be good now. Now the next step is we're going to come down here to where our hub is. We're going to grab a foundation right here and we're going to push this backwards to there and then just kind of push that over that way so and, and and we're just gonna kind of add on to our foundation here just a little bit now careful when you get over into this area because this is this area over here is filled with the gas it does come up here it can hurt you right there so make sure you're not working within that gassy area we definitely don't want to do that all right, so now it's time to build the sink. Now we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go under special in our construction menu, grab the awesome sink. Now you will see this thing is rather large. It's, it's quite large. Turn it around so that the input is facing that way, away from us here. And kind of place it anywhere you want down here. Remember this is previously where we had our um, our workshop so but we removed that so you can take it anywhere you want you can place it back a little bit but kind of get it kind of close up here so I'm gonna put mine like right here this is fine I like this there we go all right so the sink is facing the other way towards the boxes all good now for the next step here that we're gonna be doing so we need to unlock the next thing in this tier which is logistics mark two we definitely are going to need this so go ahead and select that milestone and then go ahead and complete it 
You should have everything you need to complete this milestone by now. Easy. If you don't have it in hand, you should definitely have it in the storage boxes down below. All right, so go ahead and hit the red button to launch our parts into space. All right, so if you're wondering what it is that we actually just unlocked, we just unlocked Logistics Mark II, and that is newer versions of belts and vertical lifts. So essentially, they're stronger, they're a little faster, and they can carry more. So if we go into our construction menu, we go down to Logistics, we can now see these. So let's compare Conveyor Mark I and Mark II. The Mark I can transport up to 60 resources per minute. The Mark II can transport 120 resources per minute. Same thing for the lifts, it's 120. We also got stackable conveyor poles. Now these are kind of interesting because what we can do with these is we can put like one there, right? And then we can stack them on top of each other like so. And this is good to make like all kinds of sorts of things. Like uh, we can do like there, see when then we put one up here and then have it come down. Yeah, so kind of cool stuff. We are definitely going to be playing around with the Mark II stuff though. So, But the reason I wanted to unlock that next here is because we're going to be using the Mark II belts for what we're about to build. Alright, so now that we have all of this built, let's go ahead to the next step. Uh, but we are going to need a way to get back up and down here. So let's go ahead and we're going to add a foundation right here. And then let's, let's grab one of these ramps here make sure our zoop is on. And let's just zoop all the way down to there. And, uh, you know, while we're at it, let's just go ahead and bring this foundation all the way over here. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we're going to go behind the containers here. And make sure that you have a layer back here that goes all the way across. Because we want to make sure we have that. That way we can kind of walk back here. Now, we are going to be working back in here. And it is very close to the green gas, so be careful. But we should have enough space right here if everything is built correctly. Alright. Let's go ahead and we're going to grab some mergers. So we just grab one of our conveyor mergers right here. And we want to make sure that it is facing going that way. So we want the blue arrows this way. And we're going to start on this side right here. And we're going to line these up right here. That looks good. And try to build it pretty close. You don't want to get all the way next to it, but like right here on the foundation line. That That's probably good. And let's see if this is going to work here. Oh, see, nope, I didn't line it up right. I messed up already. All right, so we'll do this again. Merger. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right. All right, and then let's see. Put that into that. Yeah. All right, so that's moving. All right. Now, let's go ahead and put a merger in front of each one of these because these are going to be making sure, again, that we're going this direction. And one in here. Don't add your conveyor belts just yet. We'll do that in a minute. Alright, one more down here on this end. There we go. Alright, and let's go ahead and we're going to come down here, copy that, and just put one right there for just to, as a spacer, and then put another one on top of it. But make sure when you put the one on top of it that it is facing this direction. So we're going to be going this direction with the belt now. So, put it like that. Yeah. And then, delete the middle one. Fantastic. Alright, and then we're going to grab a conveyor lift. And for this one, we are going to hit E on the conveyor lift to make sure we're using a Mark II. Uh, Alright. There we go. Okay. And then we're just going to keep doing this all the way across right here. So we'll put one on top of it. Doesn't matter which way this one's facing because we're just going to delete it. But we do want to make sure that our blue are, is going this direction here. And then just keep continuing that. Like so. One. And then one going that way. Like so. Alright, so this is a little complicated down here. But I think you guys are going to be able to do this just fine. If you've been following along my tutorial so far, then this isn't going to be a problem at all. Now again, we're still not going to add the belts in here because we're not ready to get all this stuff kind of moving just yet. Now we're going to come across over here 
And let's go ahead and grab a merger. Now for this one, we're going to go this way. Everything is essentially going to be going this way. So the bottom, the idea here is that the stuff comes out, is merged into one single line, and it's going to go down this way, hit this vertical lift, go up, and we're going to head it this way over through here. All right, so let's copy that. And these on this side, everything is going that direction. So that's what we want to do. Let's get it right there. I uh, don't we'll see. Didn't line it up right. Let's try that again. Uh, yeah, I think so. All right, let's make sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, we'll just do this again, right here. Oh, and I'm in the gas. Okay, gotta be careful of that. And, let's see, can we hop up on top of these? Yeah. It's much easier to work when we're on top of these. All right, copy that. And put that right there. And there okay all right and now on this one now for these top ones we're going to do essentially the same thing we did over here we're just going to put one on top right and then one on top of that one now this one we're also going that direction so just like that and we're going to delete that now let's use a conveyor belt to connect these two right here but before you hit your conveyor belt we want to use the mark ii so just go ahead and hit e to change over to the Mark II, like so. All right, and then now that belt is going to run across. So we're having everything come down there, go up, come across here, head into this line. Now these two are gonna meet down here on the end, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. But for now, let's go ahead and just put a couple of these on top of here, and then make sure that they are facing the right way. You may wanna go over to the inside on this since we are having to deal with the uh, the gas down here all right and make sure it's going that direction and I think that's gonna be good so yeah no no well actually on this last one down here what we want to do here is we want to turn this one so it's going towards the rock so like that all right now when you get down here this last one you got that turned that way go ahead and delete this and then we're going to grab a, con a conveyor lift, hit E to turn it into Mark II, connect that up to that. All right. So far, so good. Uh, we just need to delete the ones in between. So we don't need these boxes in the middle. So we'll just delete those. All right. Now, feel free at this point to go ahead and put your conveyor belts into these machines. Mark 1s are fine going into the boxes from the storage containers. That's absolutely fine. So just do this right down through here. All right. And then put that into that. That into that. That into that. And this one doesn't have a box right here, which is, that's fine. Uh, but we can keep continuing to do these like so. All right, we're just gonna keep the ones out of the middle. We're not gonna do these yet. When we do do these though, they are gonna be Mark II belts. So pretty much at this point, everything from here on out is going to be Mark IIs. So if you want, you can actually go ahead and go into your build mode, go down to logistics, and then choose your conveyor Mark II right here, and just change it over to the one on your hotbar. If you remember how to change your hotbar, Find the one you want to put on the hotbar, and then just hit the numpad key for that. So since I have my conveyor belts on three, I'm just going to change that over to a three. All right. Now that's always going to be a mark two whenever we choose it. Same thing for this. I'm going to hit four to change that. Oh, no, that was five. I forgot what four was. You know, I think it was the conveyor uh, pole. Yeah, I think. I don't know. We'll, we'll put that there just in case. All right, if we need to change it, we can change it later. All right, so this is pretty much going to be good at this point. Uh, I am going to go ahead and just put these down through here like this. And then I'm just going to build that up on top of there, down through here, like so. And we're going to put a wall up all the way down through here. Just one layer tall, though, because we are going to have a belt come across through here in just a moment. 
Now let's head back up top. All right, now from up here at the storage containers, remember this little area we built back here? Well, we're gonna go head back here now. We're gonna grab our conveyor lifts and we're gonna attach it to each one of these boxes going down just one, like so. Yep, that's perfect. All right. And now we are going to go down to the second layer down here. All right, so now we are here at the trickiest part of the build. I mean, this is going to be probably one of the most trickiest things that I've had you guys do yet. But I think once you're done here, you'll be a better builder. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and put our smart splitters and line them up down through here, lined up with these conveyor lifts back in the back back there. Um, now, the reason this is tricky is because, like I said, this entire area over here is filled with gas. Now, I don't mean like you just ate a Chipotle kind of gas. I mean a lot more deadlier, so they're a little more like Taco Bell. All right, so what we're going to do is kind of come over here, and we're going to grab our regular splitters, change that over to a smart splitter using E, okay? Make sure your yellow arrows are kind of on this side, on your right-hand side, and all your blue ones are on this direction here, to your left. And you want to push this back to about that line right in there, somewhere in this general area, kind of close in there. You don't want it in the middle. Middle's going to be too close for what we have in mind. And if we just kind of place it somewhere in there, like that. All right, and then what you want to do is you just want to go down through here, and you want to line these up. Make sure you're watching your blue arrow right there to make sure everything is lined up with that. And just kind of use your eyesight to just kind of line these up with the conveyor lifts all the way down through here. All right, and then when you get down to your last one down here on this end, what we are going to do is we're going to grab a Mark II conveyor belt. And we're going to bring it all the way down through here like this to right about there's actually good. And then we're going to line that up into our sink like so. Okay. Now, we're going to mess around with the smart splitters. So remember everything I showed you earlier, if you need practice, now's a good time to practice because the last three down here are gonna be the trickiest ones to do. So what we're gonna do is all of our materials are gonna come up and they're gonna come down through these smart splitters and each of these smart splitters is gonna sort it into an individual box depending on component, right? Okay, so we're gonna start with this first one down here on the end because down here there's no gas down here on this side. So these are gonna be a little easier and you can kind of practice with these. So we wanna go over here to the smart splitter if we hit E. Now our center is always going to be overflow. Right here for the center spark, always in the overflow. And then we're gonna do the left and the left is going to be, uh, let's see, for this last one down here on the end, let's do this one as We'll say screws down here, right? Okay, or it's just a screw. And then as you see, as you start typing, you'll start seeing the component down here and you can just select that component and bam, there you go. Okay, now the reason we're doing that to the left is because we're going to do this. We're going to take a conveyor lift, pop it onto the end of that, up one like that, and then put a Mark II conveyor belt over to that. So it's gonna come down through here and then once this machine, once this smart splitter sees screws, it's going to say all screws are going to go up and into this box right here on the end. Now, the overflow means that if it starts to overflow or anything that's not a screw is going to go on through and into the sink. All right. Okay. So we're going to do these on all of these. So let's go to the next one here. Overflow in the middle for the center spot, and this one is going to be wire. So let's go ahead and throw wire into that. Okay, now this next one here, uh, let's do overflow. And this one is going to be, even though we don't have it coming over here, we're going to use quick wire here because there's a lot of quick wire to be made. And we're gonna throw that in there like so. All right, now the reason I'm doing these three as those specific three is because those are the ones that we have the most components of. And I want them to come all the way down to the end before they start getting sorted. That way things start kind of moving a little quicker down through here. All right, so we got these three. Let's move on to this one. Overflow in the center. And this one is going to be iron plates. Just like that. Okay, there we go, iron plates. All right, and then we're gonna move on to this one here. 
And now we are in the gas. Okay, so this is where things start to get a little tricky. Let's make sure our health is completely full. So if you've got berries and things like that, now is the time to eat them. So we're just going to go ahead and fill all of these in here like that. There we go. And just fill your health up best you can. All right, so now that our health is full, these last four are the tough ones, the tricky ones, and these are going to be kind of hard to do. So what you're going to want to do is hopefully you've gotten the hang of what to do down through here because these last four, we got to be fast. we got to run in, set them, and then get back out and heal if we need to. All right, so we're going to run in. Now this one, let's see, we've got screws, wire, quick wire, iron plates. So... Uh, these next ones are going to be rods, copper sheets, uh, cable, and what what are means to be? Um, I'll think of it in a minute. All right, let's just run in and do this one as the iron rods. So let's run in real quick. Hit E, do overflow, and to our left, iron rod. All right, and then get back out. Eat a couple berries if you need to. This next one's going to be copper sheets. So run in. E, overflow, copper, sheet. There we go. Get back out. Eat some. All right, this one, we're going to do the first one is cable. What am I missing? Oh, reinforced plates. So this one's, this one's going to be cable. That's going to be reinforced plates. All right, so let's run up there. Grab this one real quick. Go. E, overflow, cable. All right, there we go. Get out, heal, and this one is going to be the reinforced plate. So, this one will probably be the one that actually kills you because it's the deepest in there. All right, in we go. Overflow. Reinforced iron plates and get out. Okay, there we have it. All right, so we got all of that set up now. Now, our next thing we're going to do is we're going to take Mark II belts and we're going to put them in between each of these right down through here like so make sure you get in between each and every one of these all right and now all of those are done next is of course we're going to place our conveyor lifts on each of these if you want to you can go ahead and it's probably a little easier to go ahead and do this now like that and probably get these ones on the end down here too a little quicker and then run your belts over like so. Essentially, we're just going to do this to every single one of these down through here. So just add your conveyor belts, add your lines. All right, so next we're going to come down here to the bottom layer down here. And we're going to go through all of these. And we're going to make sure that we have Mark II belts in between each of these uh, splitters down through here. So all in between these right here are going to be Mark II belts all the way across. Once you've got that done, we're gonna build a small ramp right here that goes up to that, to that layer there. This is just to kind of help us a little bit. Kind of stay over here to the corner a little bit, kind of out of the gas. Grab a conveyor lift and right there, connect it to the end of that smart splitter right there and bring it down. And we're gonna have the, uh, the yellow arrows are gonna be facing this way right here. Now, if this is lined up just the way we had it, what's gonna happen here? is this is going to come right down here not all the way down that's too far just do it right there right kind of above the foundation place that and now we're going to put a line we'll go right straight across from this splitter all the way into that conveyor lift and now all of our machines or all of our our cargo down here our containers are now going to be putting all of their inventory into this line now, these Mark II lines can handle 120 pieces per minute compared to the Mark I lines, like here, which are 60. These are slower for a reason, so they can feed a little slower into these, but we want this to be as fast as possible because we gotta get all this material moving as quick as possible into the boxes and going that way. All right, so if you have done this right, then all the stuff is gonna start moving up the conveyor belts and each of these is gonna be sorted into each of the correct boxes. So as you can see here, we have reinforced plates all going in this box. We have cable, which is completely full at this moment. And we have the copper sheets here, the iron rods also full. 
uh, iron plates, and so forth and so forth. And each of these is going to be correct, and you shouldn't have anything else in them except what we told the smart splitters to do. Now, one thing if you want to speed this process up a little bit is if their power is off, then that's a great time to come down here and start grabbing all the material out of these boxes and moving them up into these just kind of manually. You don't have to do that. It just makes the, this process, this next part, a little quicker, as you can see here, which is what I've done. My power is currently off, right? And I've moved everything I can up into these boxes here. I may have threw some pieces away, but... Uh, now, as you can see here, eventually it's going to start getting backed up right here in front of the sink. Now, we don't have the power on yet for our awesome sink. And that's because this thing right here uses 30 megawatts of power when it's in use, which is the equivalent of an entire whole other um, biomass generator. Yeah, so we totally don't want to uh, hook this up unless we make sure we get at least a biomass generator just for it. So I would suggest going over here, adding another biomass generator over there, uh, making sure we have enough biomass and biofuel and everything that we are producing for that and before we hook this up. Okay, so I now have a total of six biomass generators over there and the two over here now producing this. So what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and hook this up. So we'll connect a wire from there to there. And this baby should start moving in here. And it's going to start taking all of our extra flow of material that we aren't able to use anymore because our things up there are now full. As you see here, we've got, you know, wire. we got a lot of rods coming through here because all the rods are full. should be some cable coming through here eventually. But uh, if we click E to configure the awesome sink, you can now see here that this number here points until next coupon. You see this is going down. And each of these things that we're pumping into this is worth a certain amount of points. Obviously, the lower tier items aren't worth as many points as higher tier items. So you can see here we're getting like slowly counting down and then we're going to get a coupon. Now, every time you get a coupon, the number that's of pieces, the number of points you're going to need to get your next coupon is going to go up. It's just like leveling up in a, in a role playing game or something. You know, you have, whenever you level up, it's going to require more experience to level up to the next one. Same thing, except that we're talking about coupons in this one. So, a thousand coupons for the first one, fifteen hundred for the second, two thousand for the third, and so forth and so forth. You can speed this up just a little bit if you want, and here's how you can do that. We're going to go back downstairs here to just one of these first kind of containers here, and click in here. Now, you probably might have some extra AI limiters if you made some extra ones, right? So we're not going to need any more AI limiters right now at this very moment. So what you could do is you could plop these in here, right there in this very first spot right there. And that's going to start feeding those AI limiters through here pretty quick. See, there they go. Alright, so it's going to put all those through there. Now since we do not have a smart splitter up there that's saying send AI limiters anywhere, it's going to go through the overflow and into the sink. So let's go back up to the sink. All right, so here at the sink, you can see we're just, right now we're only sending just the rods through. And you can see this is taking its time. Like each of these rods is probably worth maybe a couple of points each. No biggie, right? Here comes our first AI limiter on the right side of the screen. Watch what happens when an AI limiter goes into the sink. Boom. We just went like almost halfway to our another, almost like two thirds of a way. Each of these is like almost worth a single coupon by itself. So as they're all going through here, look at that. We're now, we've already got five coupons just using the AI limiters. But now remember what I said, each time you get a coupon, it's going to cost more points. So you can't just keep feeding AI limiters into it and think you're gonna get a bunch of points. I mean, you can later on, but that's gonna require a lot of work and you're gonna get less and less coupons. So I would just kind of maybe do that for now. That should give you about eight coupons, which is pretty good. So what are we going to do with the coupons, you ask? Well, let's go ahead and hit this big yellow button here that says Print Coupons. And that's going to print out this right here. Click that. And push that over into your inventory over here. All right. Now, let's place a awesome shop somewhere. Um, this seems like a perfect place for an awesome shop. So we're going to our Build menu. Back under Special. Awesome Shop. All right. Okay. And let's place him down yeah, somewhere in here. And that's fine, right there. Okay, 
Now, let's click on the Awesome Shop, and let's take a look at what we have in here. So the Awesome Shop, you can see up here, it tells us the total number of coupons we have in our inventory right now, which is eight. And we have architecture, walls, attachments, foundations, and so forth and so forth down through here. The first thing in architecture you see here is just different things that we can get. So we can learn the recipe on how to make these by clicking on it. Let's say I wanted modern catwalks. You know, it tells me it's going to cost me five coupons to get that. It seems like a lot of coupons. And trust me, this stuff just going to cost more and more. So you can kind of browse through here. you got metal pillars, uh, road barriers, modern railing. If we go into walls, you see windowed walls down here, ramp walls, tilted walls, doors, conveyor walls. Uh, under attachments, we only have a couple things here right now, like conveyor wall mounts, conveyor lift floor holes, uh, pipeline wall attachments, wall power. These are nice right here, actually. Um, foundations. Foundations have some cool stuff in here, and as you go up in tiers, you're going to unlock more stuff here in the shop that you can get too. So this isn't everything that you can get. There's a lot more stuff, and as you go up in tiers and learn how to make new stuff, then more things will open up here in the shop. Uh, Fix-it specials, that's things like uh, vehicles or just statues. These statues, kind of pointless, so like later on in the game, once you get to a point where you no longer need coupons, you bought everything, I guess you could save up for these guys. Organization uh, is exactly what it is. It's storage. Neither of these are, are that important unless you just like the looks of them. So I probably wouldn't waste a coupon on those right away. Uh, customizer. Uh, this gives you things where you can customize stuff. Like you can turn the concrete floor or you can turn these floors that we have here into concrete floors. Or asphalt to build roads and stuff with. Or concrete walls. You can even get patterns that you can place on the floor. Dotted lines, arrows, factory icons, things like that. Under equipment, under equipment, this is uh, nothing really that you need in here. You could go ahead and grab the fix-it coffee cup if you wanted to, because I kind of like to do that right off the bat, just because I like to walk around with a coffee cup. But honestly, it does absolutely nothing, so you don't need it. It's just one of those things that's kind of fun to have in your hand, basically. And then you have the last thing over here, which is parts. I wouldn't waste coupons on parts honestly because like let's take a look at this silica one coupon will get you a hundred silica well, that may sound like a lot but you can make a hundred silica pretty easy if you know what you're doing so this putting coupons into these is just a waste unless you have tons and tons of coupons to use you've bought everything and you just need to grab something really quick and at that point I can see it worth it but I, I wouldn't waste your coupons on these things all right, so for me, right now, I have eight coupons. I'm gonna go over here to Modern Catwalks and I'm gonna purchase that. Now this is just like online shopping. I purchased it, it put it into my shopping cart. You go up here and you buy, and boom. Now we have Modern Catwalks that we can use. Now we're gonna use those right now, but if we go into our build menu and go down, you'll see a new thing over here called Architecture. Click on that and you'll see all the new goodies that we just got. So we just learned all of those recipes right there. All right, guys. So that is going to do it for this episode. I think I've covered pretty much everything here. Um, by this point, after a little bit of uh, lengthy time here, you should get your flow kind of going pretty good here. Everything should be moving into this and everything should be getting sorted out. And any extra material that we don't need is going into the sink over here. And with that sink, you can see, look, we already got another coupon of these cables most likely they don't cost they don't not a lot of points but still something and eventually all of this stuff all of these boxes are getting full and every single thing that we are making extra is going to go in here whenever we need something for our mam or to unlock something or to build something we can come up here to our storage boxes so we have a new storage system we've learned how to use the sink and we've learned how to use the shop all in this episode what I recommend for the next episode before we get started with that one is do your research in your MAM. Go ahead and go in here to Alien Organisms. If you haven't gotten already the expanded tool belt, uh, go in here and get the pocket dimension so we get more space for to carry things around. Kateria, grab the Blade Runners. The Blade Runners are freaking awesome. They let you jump higher, run faster. It's like the Bionic Man. So totally go with these. Uh, you can also maybe grab the Power Pose Mark II, which instead of being able to only put four lines onto a Power Pose, we can then put seven, which is quite nice. Uh, under Mycelia, now that I've showed you where to get the bacon 
a Gaelic. Uh, you can now go in here and we can learn that. And that's going to unlock the medicinal inhaler, which is quite nice. And yeah, so totally go in here, learn how to use all these things. Uh, just get as much as you can done on your progress towards these for the next episode. And I will see you in that one. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. And wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.